Mapping in AOTDG and making your custom maps for AOTDG absolutely sucks. It takes forever to make them, the game engine goes sluggish if you put too many objects, you are on a time crunch if you're trying to make for an expedition, so it's a lot of effort on behalf of the mappers to actually design a good looking map, which could easily burn them out. For the past two months, I was working on an interesting script. I was trying to automate the process to make a map, and this is exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video. Just for comparison's sake, let me show you what my previous map looked like. This is the map that you've seen appear in multiple expedition video last summer. And these are the maps that I was able to make using a plethora of my scripts. And uh, I believe that it does look a little bit better compared to the bear in the wasteland that was before. Also, what the hell are those lone trees? Why, why are they here? I don't understand. They're, they're weirdly placed, serve no purposes other than obstacle, and they, they're an eyesore. Believe it or not, it actually took less than 30 minutes for me to generate these maps using my scripts. And through this video, I'm going to show you how you can use my... Uh, my force generator that will allow you to basically generate a tree and an entire forest in less than five minutes. You can find a link to the force generator, the script to it, in the video's description. This link will take you to a website called File4Net. Um, the only issue with this website is, after some testing, I think there's a lot of ads. You can install Adblock Plus if you want to just block those ads away. And the reason why I'm using File4Net is because my Google Drive is completely um, packed up. There's nothing left for me to fit there. So until I'm able to clean that up, I'll have to use file for net for now. I hope you can bear with it. I'm sorry for any inconvenience those ads may place. After downloading the script, you'll notice that it is an actual Excel sheet, and the Excel sheet has some logic, but the reason why we're using an Excel sheet is because I can export this into a language that AOTDG is capable of reading in terms of the custom map. So for the first page you'll open, you'll see that you're, get, uh, you're um, beginning in the Getting Started tab. You can see at first that I've put a picture of the X and Z coordinates for a certain platform. I'll show you the uses of it very soon, so for now, don't worry about it. The second you'll see there is an actual list of trees. Um, don't touch that. I'll explain its usage later. And at the top, I've broken down the code down as to how AOTG interprets um, the mapping information, etc. For first steps, we're going to become simple. Let's say I want to generate forest over the entire platform. So we go to the forest planter tab. You'll notice that the first row has already been filled in. It's very easy. Just copy the entire content of the first row and then drag it down until you see 100. So um, the reason why I'm dragging it down to 100 is because we want to have 100 trees appear in the map. Once this is done, all you need to do is go to file, click on save as, save this as a .csv file, which .csv, which is comma separated values, so give it a name, save it to your, your location of desire, and then save it. If you receive a notification like the one on screen, this means you have successfully exported, just click on OK. Next, you want to go to that folder, you want to open it using Notepad, which will give you sort of a text file, copy all of the information over here, go to your game, and then post paste this into the custom map tab, restart the game, and you'll see the map load. You can also decide to post the entire script into the RC map tab if you want to visualize the entire idea of the map or if you want to do some small changes to it. Let's say for a second test we only want a graph in the middle horizontal line of the platform and you'll notice this area corresponds to what we need. We want the middle horizontal line. We only want trees over here. So in this case we want to drop down the coordinates. We want the X coordinates, the minimum and the maximum value, and we want the Z coordinates, the minimum and the maximum value. For the middle horizontal lane, the X coordinates, the minimum is negative 675, and the maximum is positive 675. For the Z coordinate, the minimum will be negative 225, and the maximum will be positive 225. Of course, the purpose of me doing this is to showcase to you that you can change the values for the Z and the X coordinates, so that if you have different areas you want to put trees in, you just simply need the minimum and the maximum values for both the Z coordinates and the X coordinates, put those into the script, and then you'll have a force generated in that area that you want. All right, so we've jotted down everything. Now it's time to go to the force planter tab. First of all, we've already have some leftover things from our first test. Let's clean that up. After that, go to the color M to modify the X coordinates. So we've 
written down in negative 675 and 675 to be our min and max value, respectively. Now, um, this seems to be the default state, so we don't need to change anything. The next step will be going to the O column that corresponds to the Z coordinates. And this time we notice that the numbers provided here are not with what we've jotted down. We simply change the minimum value from negative 675 to negative 225 and the maximum value from positive 675 to 225. Let's say we only want 50 trees this time to span the horizontal line of our platform. We're going to do a similar process, copy the entire first row and drag it down until we see the number 50 and then paste everything. After doing this, the same process happens. We go to file, save as, save it as a .csv file, name it something, save it to a folder of your choice, retrieve that folder and open it using notepad, copy all the content in there, post it into the game, either in the game itself so you can play around, or you want to post it into the RC map editor to visualize it or to um, even do some future minor tweaking and adjustments. For our third test, I'll show you how we can actually change what type of trees appear um, when you generate those maps. So if you go to the Getting Started tab, you'll see that there is a list called Actual List of Trees. This list tells the script that these are the trees that I want. So if you change the frequency of how much a certain tree appear, you'll change how much that tree appears during the generation. If you put more of a certain type of trees, it'll appear more often. If you put less, it'll appear less often. So let's say I only want the tree model called the Tree 3. I replace everything with tree 3, then I go to the force planter tab, I clean up everything except for the first row, I copy that first row, and let's say I just want 50 trees also in the middle horizontal line because the settings are still from the, our second test. I drag my cursor down until I see the number 50 on my left column, and I paste this entire thing. Then I repeat the same steps for the XMark process, go to file, click on save as, save as a .csv file, name it something, save it to the folder you like. You go to that folder, open it, you use notepad to open it, and then you copy this into the game, or you can copy this into the RC uh, map editor to, to visualize it. Now, it might be saying, Prolo, it's a lot of stuff for me to just generate a bunch of trees. I agree, it's a bit complex and perhaps it's not the most refined one. But if we do a short comparison of the time spent generating those things, I hope you can see how much time you're saving using the Excel script that I've made. Let's say the first test where we've generated 100 trees over the entirety of the map. It took us less than five minutes to do this work. If let's say we were using the traditional way of maybe planting a tree or a bunch of trees and then using the AOTG2 mapping tool, and let's say it takes on roughly about 10 seconds for each each tree to be planted. 10 seconds per tree, 100 trees, 1000 seconds. And this translates to 1000 divided by 60 to 16, almost 17 minutes of work. Using this Excel script that I've made, you're three times faster compared to the traditional method. As a last point I want to cover, there is a way for you to generate sort of a custom model, let's say true more leaves or a house is covered with leaves. It's gonna be a whole nother can of worm. I can make a video about this, but let's see how this video fares. So if we can get maybe, I don't know, 50 likes on this video, because I'm not that big of a YouTuber, lol. I can make a video about how you can import your custom model into the script and then use my script to map those out over an entire area. With that being said, this video is not to undermine the validity of using traditional ways of mapping, such as using the RC map editor combined with the AOTG2 map editor in order to generate some highly customized and highly detailed objects to heighten the immersion of your maps.